Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and I am back today with another video in my Inspired Saturdays collaboration series. I hope you'll stick around, find out who inspired me this week, and go see how you can find out how I inspired him. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll consider clicking on that subscribe button below and ringing that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. If you're new to my channel or new to Inspired Saturdays, I'll tell you a little bit about it before I get started. I like to stop by just about every Saturday and team up with another crafty YouTuber to be inspired by each other. We each pick a project from the other creator and we create a new project based in some way upon that piece. If after watching today's video you're a crafty YouTuber who would like to apply to join me for a Saturday, I do have the informational video linked in the description box below and that will tell you all about it and link you to the updated application for 2021. Right now I am scheduling collaborations starting in late April. Also, after you watch my video today, don't forget to go check out my collaboration partners video. It is linked at the very top of that description box below. Today, I am excited to be teaming up with Joe the Unlikely Crafter. I started following him probably a few months ago on Instagram, and then I discovered that he also has a new YouTube channel that he is starting up. So I went and I watched one of his videos. I just thought he had a fun attitude, and at the end of the video I watched, he did some outtakes, and let me tell you, we have all been there. So I went back to Instagram, and I asked him if he would like to join me for a Saturday, and I was super excited when he said yes. I will have his YouTube channel and his Instagram account linked in the description box below, so I hope you will go check out both of those sites and either give him a subscribe or a follow. For my project today, I'm going to be taking inspiration from the card that you see on screen. Now I don't see a video here for it on YouTube, this did come from Instagram and I will make sure to link that post. What I love about it is the paint swashy rainbow effect from top to bottom and the little colored in images. In front of me are the main products that I'll be using for my card, inspired by Joe. But if I do add anything later on, I will be sure to let you know. As always, if I leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in that comment section and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. For my stamps today, I'll be using the Epic Celebration set from Stampin' Up. It is discontinued. I found it recently because I just had to have the little Converse-like tennis shoes. I decided though for today, I'll be using the headphones, and I'm not sure yet if I'll be using a sentiment from the set or if I'll select something else. For my paint swoosh or swatch, I'll be using this stamp from Gina Marie Designs, and I chose a rainbow of inks from Gina K Designs. I store all of my Gina K Designs inks in one of the containers that her kits come in. What I did was swatch out each of the colors, and then inside I have all my ink cubes, and I did build a little divider paper thing at the bottom so they don't move all around. To choose my rainbow of inks, I just chose an alternative rainbow palette using the ink swatches on the front. I ended up choosing Passionate Pink, Tangerine Twist, Wild Dandelion, Jelly Bean Green, and Turquoise Sea. I just like the way that those go together. To color my headphones, I just have to do a little bit of coloring. So I got out my Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. I got out my Clear Blender and I got out my number 90 gray. Now these other two colors, I'm not sure yet if I will be putting my headphones on the green or the blue paint swatch. So I got out a coordinating Zig marker for each one. The reason that I came to these colors is on the Gina K Designs Facebook page, she has some files 
that you can print out and she has one that has marker matches for her inks. So I got out for the green, number 41 light green and number 42 turquoise green. And we'll see later which one of these I use. To stamp my headphones, I got out a small scrap of Strathmore Bristol Smooth. I find that this works best with the zig markers. And I did go ahead and pre-cut the rest of my cardstock. I have a piece of just standard white cardstock that is three and three quarters by five. I have a piece of black cardstock that is four by five and a quarter. And then just a heavyweight white card base. Let's get crafty. To get started today, I'm gonna to be doing the stamping. I will be using a stamp block for the first stamp, and I did discover that these stamps were made before Stampin' Up! got their cling back figured out, so I did have to put some ATG on it to get it to stick on the block. I know I've asked before, but will you let me know in the comment section below what you use on stamps like this? I've gotta get something figured out. For my black ink today, I'm using the VersaFine Onyx Black. I find that this works well with my Zig markers. I stamp the headphones just on that scrap, and then I'm gonna use my pick scan mat on my silhouette to fussy cut this. Now, I am pretty new to that silhouette software and doing this, so right now I'm not quite ready to show you how I do it. It did take me a few trial and errors on that. Now I'm going to do my rainbow stamping, and I did go ahead and bring in my Misty just in case I need to ink up and stamp anything twice. Now what I'm going to do here is start with the middle color in the rainbow, and then go to the first and last. That will help me make sure to space them out a little bit better. I started with the middle, which is the yellow. This one I did have to ink up twice, but it is the only color in the rainbow that I did that for. Once I had that yellow stamped, I made sure to clean off the stamp really well with my little cleaning cloth there, and then I'm going to place it for the next color. Now you'll see I brought in that piece of clear cardstock, and this is going to allow me to align the stamp where I want it without accidentally getting any extra ink on the cardstock. I stamped the blue and the pink next on the very top and bottom, leaving just a small margin. And then finally, I brought in the last two colors and centered those between the other three. While I still had the Misty out, I decided to go ahead and stamp my sentiment, which I did decide on the You're Awesome from the Stampin' Up! set. To help with the placement, I brought in my headphones and kind of got those placed where I would want them on the final card, and this allowed me to place my sentiment stamp where I wanted it. I had forgotten that I would need some adhesive on the back, so I added that, put it back in place, and then stamped it. I did do a little test run with the sentiment to make sure it was straight across on the piece, and I did that by bringing back in that piece of clear cardstock, and I stamped on that, and this allows you to see the card below it and make sure it's where you want it. Now it was a little bit crooked, so I did fix that, but then I could just clean off that clear cardstock with my cleaning cloth, remove it, and then stamp the sentiment onto the card piece. Next, it was time to get the headphones colored. I did decide to go with the blue for the headphones, and then I will be coloring some of it in gray. I also brought in that scrap of white cardstock to clean off my blender when it got too much color. If you've been around my channel long, you know that when it comes to coloring, I definitely like to keep it simple. I try to use just one shade of each color I want to use, and I do the shading by actually using my blender. I will put color where I think the shadows are, and then blend that out into the rest of the open area. I do always have that scrap to wipe my marker off on when I think I have too much color on my brush. So I continue to color the headphones in blue and a little bit of gray. And while you watch me do that, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or the question of the video. 
Today's question is kind of courtesy of one of my subscribers. She did answer my QOTV in a video the other day, but then she asked me a question as well. So I thought I would pose that same question to you. What is your favorite color? And do you craft with it a lot or do you just use it in other areas? Make sure to leave your answer in the comment section below and add the hashtag, hashtag QOTV so I know that you've answered it. For myself, my favorite color is aqua. I would have to say it is the exact color that I'm coloring these headphones. I have been drawn to this for a while now. Now, while it is my favorite color, it's not necessarily a color I craft with in excess or really wear. I just love the color. Now that all of the individual elements were ready, I could start putting the card together. I did this by matting my stamped piece with the black cardstock and then placing these two layers centered on the card front. Then to add some dimension by popping my headphones up off the card front, I brought in my big blue roll of foam tape in the quarter inch width. I filled the back of these headphones as well as I could with the tape. And then you'll note here that the blue tape itself was just a little bit too wide to go around the headband. So I ended up cutting about a quarter of it off and then I removed the release tape ahead of time so I could kind of form that tape around the headband as I went. Once the tape was in place and I pulled the release paper, I got this put on the card. To finish up the card with a little bling, I brought in my clear glitter dots with this silver outline from Elizabeth Craft Designs. I love these because they add a little sparkle, but they don't add a whole lot of bulk or weight. I just place these randomly in I think two different sizes around the card front until I ha thought I had a nice array and layout of those. And here's a look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I was inspired by Joe today. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Now don't forget to go visit his video. It's linked at the top of the description box below. Until my next one, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.